Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, I hope you are doing well. I am Shirbe Madayu, again here with another informative video related to the power electronics and the MATLAB simulation. Dear viewers, today we are going to perform the experiment regarding the single phase full wave center tape control rectifier on the MATLAB software. So before doing this experiment, let us discuss some few points regarding the single phase full wave center tape control rectifier. So the full wave center tape control rectifier circuit consists of the two thyristor, the thyristor 1 and the thyristor 2. So now during the positive half cycle of the AC input supply voltage, the thyristor 1 is said to be in the forward bias condition. When thyristor 1 is fired at omega t is equal to the alpha, then thyristor 1 starts conducting the current and input voltage will appear across the load resistor. At omega t is equal to the pi, the current through this SCR1 or the thyristor 1 becomes 0 and it is turned off. During the negative off cycle of the AC input supply voltage, the thyristor 2 is said to be in the forward bias condition while thyristor 1 is in the reverse bias condition. When thyristor 2 is fired at omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha, then thyristor 2 or the SCR2 start conducts the current and input voltage will appear across the load resistor. And at omega t is equal to the 2 pi, the current through the SCR2 or the thyristor 2 becomes 0 and it is turned off. So dear viewers, without wasting time, let us do the simulation regarding the single phase full wave center tape control rectifier on the MATLAB. Dear software. viewers, our main objective of this experiment is to implement this single phase center tape control rectifier connected with the resistive load circuit diagram on the MATLAB software. So the phase control for the both half cycles of the AC input supply voltage is now possible in the case of the single phase center tape control rectifier connected with the resistive load. Okay. So now you can see this circuit comprises of the two number of the SCR and that are connected with the secondary winding of the transformer. This is the SCR1 and this is the SCR2. Now you can see these are the input sinusoidal voltage waveform. Okay, and these are the output DC voltage controlled waveform. Okay, that can be obtained across this load resistor. Okay, so now during the positive off cycle of the AC input supply voltage. Okay, now the thyristor one or the SCR one is said to be in the forward bias. But when SCR1 is fired at omega t is equal to this alpha, okay, so now thyristor 1 or the SCR1 starts conducting and the input voltage will appear across this load resistor. And at the pi, as you can see in a sinusoidal waveform, at the omega t is equal to the pi, the current through this SCR1 is becomes 0 and it is turned off. So now during the negative off cycle of the AC input supply voltage, the SCR2 is set to be the forward bias. Now when SCR2 is fired at omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha, okay, now this SCR2 conducts and input voltage will appear across this load resistor. Now at omega t is equal to the 2 pi, the current through this SCR2 becomes 0 and it is turned off. So dear viewers, we have to implement this single phase center tape control rectifier circuit diagram on the MATLAB software. So go to the power library. Components we require for the simulation of the single phase full wave center tape control rectifier or AC voltage source we need. We need a transformer. We need the ground. We need thyristor. We need the voltage measurement. Also, we need display block. We need uh, we need root mean square value block. So now assemble the circuit as per the circuit diagram. Connect this AC voltage source to the winding one of the transformer so that can be called as the primary winding. Okay. And also connect the ground with the negative terminal of the AC voltage source. Okay. 
and if we want to measure the voltage across the primary winding of this transformer so connect the voltmeter in parallel across this primary winding of the transformer so this voltmeter would give us the primary voltage okay primary voltage okay make it center tip transformer okay so another ground we need okay connect this ground in between the two and the three terminals of this transformer okay so in a full wave center tip control rectifier we need the two thyristor okay so we need another thyristor okay now so now make it r okay so now connect these two thyristor with the secondary winding of this transformer okay so now connect the load resistor with these thyristors okay we need another ground okay now for providing the gate pulse to this thyristor in the metal so we need the pulse generator block okay so go to the simulink we need the we need this pulse generator okay now connect this pulse generator with this thyristor one so this can be denoted as the scr1 okay and this is our scr2 okay also we need another pulse generator now this pulse generator will provide the firing angle to the gate of this scr2 okay now this is the first pulse generator now the function of this second pulse generator is provide the firing angle to this scr2 okay also we need a scope okay also we need another voltmeter so now go to the parameters of the scope make it two number of the ports okay now this second port of this oscilloscope would give us the control dc output voltage waveform in the case of the single phase center tip full wave control scr okay and connect this first port of this oscilloscope before the scrs okay so now change the parameters of the circuit go to the transformer okay 5 e power 3 apparent power 50 hertz frequency 440 volts winding one 220 volts for winding two and again the same parameters for the winding three okay apply okay and supply voltage 440 volts given to the primary winding of the transformer frequency 50 hertz go to the rms value block make it 50 hertz frequency change the value of the resistance make it 100 ohm so now our first objective of this experiment is to apply the firing angle to the gate of this scr1 when alpha is equal to the 45 degree then scr1 starts conducting the current and input voltage will appear across this load resistor okay so now go to the pulse generator setting of the thyristor one okay and uh, here amplitude is the one frequency is over 50 hertz so t is equal to 1 over f so 1 over 50 is equal to 0 0.02 period in seconds pulse width is 1 okay so now how to calculate the phase delay okay in the MATLAB so our alpha is 45 so formula is uh, alpha divided by 360 multiplied by 0 0.02 which is the time period in seconds so here alpha is the 45 divided by 360 okay 
multiplied by 0 0.02 in second apply okay so also we have to apply the firing angle to the gate of this scr2 at pi plus alpha okay so now what is the value of the pi pi is the 180 and alpha is the 45 so 180 plus 45 is equal to the 225 degree so when alpha is equal to 225 degree for this scr2 then this scr2 conducts and input voltage will appear across this load resistor so go to the pulse generator settings of the scr2 okay amplitude is the one again frequency is 50 hertz so t is equal to 1 over f so 1 over 50 is equal to 0 0.02 this time period in seconds okay plus width one so now this scr2 is to be fired when omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha so pi is the 180 and alpha is the 45 so 180 plus 45 is equal to double to five degrees so here alpha for the scr2 is double to five divided by 360 multiplied by 0 0.02 okay so phase delay in terms of the seconds will be 0 0.0125 seconds okay apply okay so now our circuit is ready for the simulation run the simulation and observe the results of the dc output control voltage waveform of this scr1 when alpha is equal to the 45 degree or the phase delay in terms of the seconds is the 0 0.0025 and also we have to observe the DC output control voltage waveform of this SCR2 when omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha means alpha is equal to double to five degree or phase delay for this SCR in terms of seconds will be 0 0.0125 run the simulation okay so now these are the results of the input and output voltage waveforms okay so now this yellow waveform is the input sinusoidal voltage waveform okay so now this blue waveform is the dc output control voltage waveform when alpha is equal to the 45 degree for this scr1 and also when alpha is equal to the double to five degree for this scr2 so now during the positive off cycle of the ac input supply voltage the thyristor one or the scr1 is said to be in the forward bias condition when scr1 gate is fired at omega t is equal to the alpha means here alpha is equal to the 45 degree so now what happened this thyristor one or this scr1 conducts and input voltage will appear across this load resistor and when omega t is equal to this pi the current through this scr1 becomes zero and scr1 will be turned off so now during the negative off cycle of the ac input supply voltage the scr2 is said to be in the forward bias condition now when scr2 is fired when omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha now here pi is equal to 180 degree and alpha is equal to the 45 degree so now alpha here for the scr2 will be double to five degree and hence it conducts the current and input voltage will appear across this load resistor and when omega t is equal to this 2 pi the current through this scr2 will become zero and it is turned off so now our second objective is to apply the firing angle to the gate of this scr1 when alpha is equal to the 90 degree and then this scr1 conducts and input voltage will appear across this load resistor and also we have to apply the firing angle to the gate of this scr2 when omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha so value of the pi is the 180 degree and plus alpha is equal to the 90 degree so here the alpha for the scr2 will be equal to the 270 degree and hence uh, this scr2 starts conducting the current and input voltage will be appeared across this load resistor so go to the pulse generator setting of the scr1 okay so now here alpha for the scr1 is the 90 degree okay apply okay. so now go to the first generator settings of the scr2 okay now this scr is fired when omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha so the value of the pi is the 180 degree and alpha here is the 90 degree so 180 plus 90 is equal to 270 degree means the alpha for the scr2 here will be 270 degree apply okay so now our circuit is ready for the simulation run the simulation and observe the results of the dc output controlled voltage waveform of this scr1 when alpha is equal to the 90 degree or phase delay in terms of seconds will be 0 0.005 and also we have to observe the results of the dc output control voltage waveform of this scr2 when omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha 
so value of the pi is 180 degree and alpha is the 90 so 180 plus 90 is equal to 270 degree so alpha for the scr2 here will be the 270 degree and phase delay in terms of the seconds for this scr2 will be 0 0.015 run the simulation so this yellow waveform is the input sinusoidal voltage waveform and this blue waveform is the DC output controlled voltage waveform when alpha is equal to the 90 degree for this SCR1 and also when alpha is equal to the 270 degree for this SCR2. So now during the positive off cycle of the AC input supply voltage, the thyristor 1 or the SCR1 is said to be in the forward bias condition. When SCR1 gate is fired, when alpha is equal to the 90 degree, so this SCR1 conducts and input voltage will appear across this load resistor. And when omega t is equal to this pi, the current through this SCR1 becomes zero and it is turned off. So now during the negative off cycle of the AC input supply voltage, the SCR2 is said to be in the forward bias condition. When SCR2 is fired at omega t is equal to the pi plus alpha, so the value of the pi is 180 degree and alpha here is the 90 degree. So alpha here for the SCR2 will be 270 degree and SCR conducts and input voltage will appear across this load resistor. And when omega t is equal to this 2 pi, the current through this SCR2 will be zero and it is turned off. So dear viewers, this was the simulation regarding the single phase full wave center tape control rectifier that we have done on the MATLAB software. So dear viewers, this was the experiment regarding the single phase full wave center tape control rectifier that we have done on the MATLAB software in which we have observed the results of the input sinusoidal voltage waveform and also observe the DC output control voltage waveform at the different firing angles using oscilloscope before and after the full wave center tape control rectification. I hope that you have enjoyed the today's experiment and at the last, do subscribe my YouTube channel Shoebem Madayo for more informative videos related to the electrical engineering, electronics and the power electronics area. Thank you.